Well, great. Well, thank you for uh, joining us today. We're still, um, we still got a lot of people just joining us um, all over Texas, all over the U.S. And uh, please put your information in our chat box and uh, we'll know who you are and then your information about doing your evaluation at the end. Thank you for joining us today for Improving Resilience. This is a, a joint webinar hosted by 180 and Starlight Recovery Center. Let me introduce Chantal Dumas. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, 180? Yes, hi, thanks Eric. Good morning everyone. Um, do you, am I coming through okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you for joining us and um, you got to see a little bit behind the scenes. So thank you for hanging in there with us. Um, I'm the 180 service coordinator at Methodist Hospital South and that is located in Jordanton, Texas. We are outside of San Antonio going south. Um, we do an acute inpatient medical withdrawal stabilization. It's typically a three to four day stay on the med search floor. Um, we are able to medically treat alcohol, opioids, and prescription medications. We also devise a discharge plan and follow up with the patient for a year. It's an amazing service. Um, I'm gonna put all my information in the chat. Uh, if you ever need help or just have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, we are in network with most Medicaid and Medicare commercial pays, and we also offer a cash pay. Um, Cynthia is our guest speaker today, and she is the CNO and the COO of Impact Healthcare Management, which owns 180. We have a lot of uh, locations across the U.S. Um, with the service. And Eric, do you want to introduce yourselves before I go into Cynthia? Or I know a lot of people know you guys, so. Well, thank you. And uh, my name is Eric Ailes. I'm Director of Business Development at Starlight Recovery Center. And uh, we appreciate you joining with us today. Uh, we're still waiting for a few more people to attend. So if you're just now joining us, please put your information in our chat box. And if you have questions throughout the presentation, use the Q&A box and we'll address those at the end. Um, you will get a, a link to do your evaluation and print off your certificate. Please use the professional uh, license number box and put in uh, your information so we could use that for audit purposes. Uh, and a special thanks to Frank Valley from Starlight for coordinating the CEUs today. Frank, can you tell everybody about Starlight? I sure can. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, wow, it's amazing. We've had over 500 people registered for this from across the United States. Uh, so welcome. Uh, if you're not familiar with Starlight, it was the very first and is the oldest drug and alcohol treatment center in Texas. Uh, we've been uh, operating for over 62 years and have treated 45,000 people. We're up in the beautiful Texas Hill Country, about 40 minutes from San Antonio on a 55-acre ranch. We have all types of programs within our uh, services. We have an adolescent female, 13 to 17. Uh, it's also considered a high school, so they continue their education while they're in treatment. We also have our adults, 18 on a male and female with all types of programs within that service, such as we treat and help the LGBTQ community. We have a Christian focused community. Uh, we also are really proud of our newest addition, which is a separate uh, wing of our facility for first responders, military, our professionals. And we treat the PTSD, EMDR, all masters trauma responsive uh, therapists, uh, our doctors and addictionologists, we have three psychiatrists. So primary is going to, for admission is addiction and secondary is going to be behavioral health. So we treat the co-occurring disorders. We admit 24 seven, we provide transportation. We're a network with 49 insurances and we are accepting some Medicaid. So please visit our website and look at our information. If you have any questions or need more information or need help with a referral, please let me know. We work very closely with 180 at, in Jordanton at Methodist Hospital style. Uh, a lot of patients need a higher level of care for the detox uh, for medical uh, complications. So we welcome that collaboration we have with them. 
So again, I'll be putting all this information in the chat. Uh, my email and Eric's email will be in there in case you have questions, having difficulty getting your uh, certificate. A lot of government agencies have blocks on their domains and addresses where you can't access links or print certificates. So if you have problems, please contact me. Thank you. All right. Eric? Thanks, Frank, for uh, coordinating the CEUs today. And uh, we appreciate all your help putting this together. And Chantel, would you like to uh, introduce our awesome speaker for the day? Of course I would. All right, well, Cynthia Pearsall, like I said, is the CNO and COO of um, 180. Um, she is a registered nurse with an undergraduate degree from the University of Cincinnati and a graduate degree from George Mason University. She began her career in the United States Navy as a Navy nurse. Her post-military experience includes bedside and leadership nursing roles in critical care, informatics, biomedical engineering, and hospital chief nursing officer. Currently, she is the Chief Nurse and Chief Operating Officer of Impact Healthcare Management, whose mission it is to partner with acute care hospitals across the U.S. desiring to serve those suffering acute withdrawal from substances of abuse. And without further ado, Cynthia, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Chantel. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for your uh, resilience and hanging in there um, through this. And I appreciate the opportunity. Um, it is a, it's daunting to think that um, there are so many of us out there who, who uh, are struggling with resilience and, and I'm very blessed to be able to be part of hopefully what I know to be a, a, an evidence-based practices that will help you with that. Um, if I am successful today in the next hour, um, you will have a good idea about our service in that we have had experiences with staff who were stressed and how I help try and do my best to help our staff with those things. Um, you'll have some tools to improve your emotional and physical resilience. You'll understand the compassion, the differences between compassion fatigue, stress and their impact that it has on you as caregivers and for those for whom you care. The signs and symptoms of compassion fatigue and stress the relationship between compassion, fatigue, stress, job satisfaction, and patient outcomes. What you do um, and how you do it um, in terms of your stress um, does have impact on your patients. Introduce some reactive tools, meaning what you can do in the moment to mitigate the immediate challenges that you experience. And then some proactive tools that are designed to mitigate long-term um, and give you some resilience long-term, no matter what happens, where it happens and how it happens. You've heard about me, you know that I'm the chief nursing officer and um, my, mostly what I do is mentor and assess employees and the company's well-being. A little bit of, that's my, some of my um, resume. Uh, I must, it sounds like I'm about 110 years old. Um, I've just been very blessed and um, and again, our elevator script uh, for 180. I just want, again, the reason we even bring it up, or at least I bring it up at this point, is that people who are dealing with people with substance abuse disorder um, sometimes have, have um, prejudices, that's what I'll call them, about, the, about these patients and their wounds um, and their disease. And it, 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 it shows, and it usually shows when they're pretty stressed. I am beholden to a man by the name of, last name of Mackesy, who wrote a book. Ostensibly, it's a child's book, but really it's a, for adults. And he does the artwork and wrote the book. And it's one of those things that I think can help me make my point to you or points to you um, el much more elegantly than I could do it without it. And, that, and if you'll see in this picture, there's some swans in sort of the middle, a little boy on a horse, and behind him is a mole. You can hardly see it. The mole is integral to the story. How do they look so together and peaceful, asked the boy, referring to the swans, of course. This, and then the, the mole, there's a lot of frantic paddling going on beneath, said the horse. Can you see? Okay. Um, and then they're walking along in the snow. Being kind to yourself is one of the greatest kindnesses, said the mole. 
These will become more pertinent as time goes on. Hospital staff, I talked a little bit about that um, and their stress and what they're going through and what we experience partnering in them in care of patients. And then our staff get stressed too and they need help. Um, what's compassion fatigue? I'm a big definition person. I think everybody, sometimes we use terms and we're not on a level playing field. But for compassion fatigue has been studied and it's really vicarious traumatization, meaning it, it occurs after repeated exposure to other people's suffering. Stress is a feeling of acute helplessness in the face of overwhelming demands. And resilience is the ability to bounce back quickly from difficulties. So I think now we're all on this level playing field about what I'm talking about. I'll refer to these, um, the, uh, the difference between them as we go along to make the points more strongly. You're gonna have reactive tools to be used in the moment and prevention tools to use proactively if I've done my job adequately. I am, I am heavily into um, repeating things because it, for me as an adult learner, I know that's what I need. Again, vicarious traumatization is what compassion fatigue is all about with repeated exposure um, from other suffering. And the story that comes to my mind when I think about this is a priest and a nurse. Um, I read this in a local periodical and a, a nurse was um, on a COVID unit caring for many patients over a long period of time. And um, one of her patients needed a priest. The priest needed to come in and give last rites. So the nurse and the priest gowned up, went into the patient's room. The last rites were performed. They came out of the room, climbed out of as much garb as was appropriate. And the priest turned to the nurse and said, how are you doing? And this nurse fell into his arms in tears. Obviously, to me, she was experiencing compassion fatigue at its highest. Compassion fatigue sufferers also suffer from headaches, digestive problems, muscle tension, sleeplessness, or they, get, or they sleep too much. They're tired. They have chest pain, pressure, palpitations, tachycardia. They don't necessarily have all of them, but they have some of them. It's a physiological difference that they feel. It is also can be mitigated and it can be prevented. Depression, anger and resentment, loss of objectivity, memory issues, poor concentration, focus and judgment. Oh, and I forgot to mention that in the bottom, you'll see references with numbers attached. At the end of my presentation are all of my references and there are, uh, and they're numbered and that's to which, that's the um, reference to which I can attach what I have here. Um, mood swings, restlessness, irritability, oversensitivity, anxiety, excess use of substances such, nicotine, such as nicotine, alcohol, and illicit drugs. Employers feel it too. They see staff who avoid or dread coming to work. They re their reduced ability to feel empathy, their frequent use of sick days, and their just plain lack of joyfulness. Turnover, reduced staff learning, increased patient falls, severe medication um, errors. Patients feel it. Um, coworkers feel it. And it's measurable. And studies have been done. And I'll, I'll speak briefly about those studies. This is how people feel when they're stressed, when they have compassion fatigue. It's like, now what? I'm stuck. I am absolutely don't know which way to turn. Charlie Mackesy, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Isn't it odd? We can only see our, our outsides, but nearly everything happens on the inside. Gladys Caton's title published an uh, article in 2002 in the American Journal of Hospice and Palliative Care Nurses, uh, Medicine. Her, her findings were that staff lose their ability to care, just can't take it anymore when the reason they took the extended time off and their leave for their other role. Um, Susan Gerano in 2018 studied the impact of nurses um, turnover over 
uh, on patient outcomes. Her findings were published in the Journal of Nursing Scholarship, included 268 nursing units and 141 hospitals over a six month period of time. And her findings in a nutshell were that turnover negatively impacted work group learning, patient falls and severe medication errors. I promised you evidence. Um, social workers, I certainly didn't want to leave your science out. It's widely recognized, and this was by Bridal et al., writing in the Journal of Clinical Social Workers. It's widely recognized that indirect exposure to trauma involves an inherent risk of significant emotional, cognitive, and behavioral changes in the clinician. This phenomenon, variously referred to as vicarious traumatization, secondary traumatic stress, and compassion fatigue, is now viewed as an occupational hazard of clinical work that addresses psychological trauma, a view supported by a growing body of empirical research. This will get better and a little more happy over time. Resilience, this is what we need and more want more of. The ability to recover quickly from get difficulties spring back into shape. The question is how? One of the greatest freedoms is how we react to things. The mole says to the boy, and so true it is. I'm going to the first tool, resilience in the moment. Take a deep breath. I know that may sound silly, but there are physiological reasons where the first thing, when you know you are in a stressful situation, where maybe you don't even realize it, but your heart's racing and you are uh, someone or something has done something with or to you that has caused you pause take a deep breath this will increase the amount of oxygen and the pressure inside your chest it'll slow your heart rate down and it will allow you to think more clearly it will allow you to stay in the moment it signals your brain that everything is really okay. This is not a saber-toothed tiger. This may be an unhappy patient. It may be an unhappy staff person. It may be someone just told you something you really didn't want to hear. And it has a modicum of truth to it. Take a deep breath. You will have a clearer head and improved ability to problem solve. It will keep you from saying the thing you know you just said and should never have said. Take a deep breath. So let's practice. Do it again. Take a deep breath. It really works. Take another deep breath. And I'm going to be terribly transparent with you at the moment. I am not in my typical spot where I normally give talks. I was having some computer issues. So I am sitting in my living room. And at this point, it, I'm unable to avoid my 80 pound golden retriever who's sitting beside me, who I'm terrified is going to look out the window and see another dog menacing the sidewalk that is outside our, our home and going to bark. And so I am taking deep breaths and doing my best to keep him calm as well. Another tool in the moment is think of your favorite someone, someplace, or something. And after your deep breath, think of someone, someplace, or something that you really appreciate that you would rather be with at the time. And this is my father. He has 91, he's soon to be 91. Um, he and I were celebrating something very special to me and someone snapped that picture. And it's just something I like to go to in, matter, in moments of stress. It always seems to give me what you'll learn later is um, some positive feeling. Um, I love the beach. I can go to the beach give me a chance to go to the beach, I'm there. And I like roses a lot too. I like the way they smell. I like the way they look. I like to grow them. Uh, and they're just lovely, resilient things. So think of right now, think of, get a someone in your head that you really, really appreciate. 
or some place that you, given a choice, would rather be when you know it provides you peace and resilience or something that you would like to have in the room with you, really. Let's practice that tool or, or the addition of that tool. Take a deep breath. Think of someone, something, somewhere you appreciate. Do it again. Take a deep breath. Think of someone, something, or somewhere that you appreciate. Okay, let's talk about some prevention of stress. How do you get more resilient? How do you just start the day or the week from more proactively with some resilient? You're ready, you're far more ready with this tool having practiced it than you would be without it. It's really the story of adrenaline and the half-lives of DHEA and cortisol. There's a physiologic reason that these tools work. And I, as an evidence-based practitioner, person, like to understand why things work and how things work. So when we are immediately stressed, when there's something that you nearly hit by a car or you are uh, cut off while driving, or someone says something to you that you're not particularly fond of hearing, you get a dose of adrenaline. It's known as the fight or flight hormone. It's half-life is two minutes. If it is, a, the perver if it is a bear in the woods, you're taking a walk and you come upon a bear, you need that adrenaline. You need a dose of adrenaline that gives you the energy to run and run far and run fast. Now, with a half-life, of two minutes, you're not going to get too far unless you are an am amazingly fast runner. And probably if you're in the woods, it's, there's going to be some obstacles to uh, slow you down. So you're going to need something more than adrenaline, but it's a good first thing. Now, you get a dose of adrenaline when someone cuts you off at the pass while you're driving. That is um, not the time to run away or to react negatively. Um, you need to be safe. And so, um, if you, if you um, then give yourself a dose of cortisol, which is secreted by your adrenal gland, um, it's potent, it's a potent anti-inflammatory, so we need it on occasion, particularly if we're running away from a bear. It's called the stress hormone. It's also called the aging hormone and the belly fat hormone. So it has some positive effects and it has some negative effects. Its half-life is 12 hours and it's needed for the flight, the fight or flight response. Now, why it's needed for that is because if you are being chased by a bear, you need to keep running and you need to keep thoughtfully running so that you can stay upright and get, get out of there. By the same token, if that is the proverbial person who cut you off while you were driving, and you start perseverating over what just happened and you engage in giving yourself a dose of cortisol, then you will feel horrible for 12 hours. You will feel negative. You will, it just is that way. And by the way, not only are you aging yourself, you're giving yourself the opportunity to develop body fat. Now you need the fat if you're physically running, you need that. But if you are not, then you're just, you're just reliving the experience by telling your colleagues how awful your drive-in was to work. You are um, giving yourself something that you can do without, the half-life of which is 12 hours, which means it takes about 24 hours to get rid of it. It is needed in the fight or flight reaction. It isn't needed when you are cut off at the pass while you're driving. It's secreted by your adrenal glands, gonads. This is DHEA, excuse me. It's secreted by your, um, DH, your DHEA, is secreted by your adrenal glands, gonads, and brain. It's known as the anti-aging hormone. Its half-life is 12 hours. And you want to proactively give yourself doses of this 
And this is what this particular tool is about, is being able to give yourselves a good dose of DHEA and uh, so you can be resilient over time. You have a choice. Do you want the aging hormone or the anti-aging hormone? Um, which would you like more of? It's the moon. Asked, is that the moon? Asked the boy. It's a teacup stain, said the mole. And where there's tea, there's cake. And what I neglected to tell you earlier about the mole is he has a real love of cake. So cake is what he dwells on when he sees something that might be a problem. The answer is, it's really a matter of perspective. When you see that stain, is it a cake? Is it is a cake nearby? Or is it that your 12-year-old left a glass of something cold that sweated on your favorite coffee table and it is now has a ring on it? It's your perspective. Maybe, maybe your perspective in the 12-year-old's case could be that, you know, you love the kid. He's not someone or she is not someone that is always the neatest person in the world, but you wouldn't trade him for the world. And appreciation is this has the strongest impact on our health and well-being. If you want a dose of DHEA, spend some time thinking of persons, places, and situations that you appreciate. And not only in the moment, but over time. Excuse me. My dog walked over my drawing, clearly trying to make the point. You will see the greatest illusion, said the mole, is that life should be perfect. And the word perfect is smeared. And Mr. Mackesy, when he was, he puts this, this drawing down as part of his book, his dog walked across his drawing. Now, how his dog got a chance to do that is another story, I imagine. But he, his perception of it was he just clearly wanted to help make a point. He was helpful in his book. Tell you a true story about a three-year-old and his mom. This three-year-old um, is a colleague of mine. He's no longer three. He is certainly significantly older than three. He's been a juvenile, juvenile diabetic since he was three. He quite honestly is the most healthy diabetic over that amount of time that I have ever met. And I have met a lot of diabetics in my 40 plus, 40 plus years of career as a nurse. Um, and his, uh, he had a roommate when he was admitted to the hospital after his diagnosis of, of diabetes, which he um, got diabetes after having uh, measles. His, um, his mom um, had him, helped him bed down and say goodnight to him and left the hospital. And when he, uh, he had three, this, this young man, this Alex, had a three-year-old um, roommate. Um, he was in the bed next to him and he was really, really a sick kid. Not Alex, but his roommate was very sick. Alex rolled over and went to sleep that night. And when he woke up in the morning, the next, the bed to him was empty. And um, the, uh, his, his mom came in the next morning and she said, Alex, um, do you know what happened to your roommate? And he said, no, I don't know what happened. Um, and his mother said, he died, Alex. He had a very bad disease called cancer and he died last night. And his mother must have done such a beautiful job of describing that to him, that he wasn't frightened by it. It became a very powerful message between the two of them over their lifetimes together. Um, but having said that, I said to Alex, when I met him and found out about what his medical history was, um, and not being terribly shy about asking people things, I said, Alex, you are so incredibly healthy. I would never have guessed that you are that you are a diabetic since you've been three years old. 
Um, and he said, well, it was my mom. My mom, every time I complained about the lifestyle I had to lead, it was so different than the kids I hung out with. I couldn't eat their birthday cake. There were things I couldn't have for lunch. There were just so many occurrences of things that could, should, or would have made me feel sorry for myself, except when I would claim, complain to my mom, she would say, Alex, think of that three-year-old boy that was in the bed next to you and how lovely it is that you are still alive. Appreciate the fact that you're still alive. And then what you have is diabetes and it's easily controlled. You just have to take care of yourself. So here's the tool at its best. I want you to spend at least 10 minutes a day taking slow, deep breaths, making a list mentally or in writing about all the things that you have going for you, everything that you appreciate. I can't tell you what those things are. I know that you can know, only, only you know what those things are, that if you could um, be with them or do them or sit with them, um, you can virtually in writing or just sitting quietly thinking about all those things that we have in our lives that are positive and that we appreciate and that we would miss terribly if they weren't in front of us virtually. So let's practice. I'm going to give you a few minutes. I warn you now. Take some slow, deep breath and close your eyes if that helps you to concentrate. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Think of anything that you love. Breathe in, breathe out. I've learned how to be in the present. How, asked the boy, I find a quiet spot and shut my eyes and breathe, said the mole. That's good. And then, then I focus. What do you focus on? Cake, said the mole. It can be as simple as cake. Let me give you some more proactive tools. Find someone to talk to, not to complain to, not to give yourself DHEA over, or excuse me, cortisol over. Find someone to talk to. Understand that what you feel is normal. We are up against many things that we're not accustomed to being up against. We now know that life will never be the same, that it can change in a heartbeat, literally, and that we, in, in our resilient mode, can get through it. Exercise and eat properly. Get enough sleep. Take time off. Develop other interests, not work-related, and figure out what's important to you. Caring for yourself in difficult in the face of difficult work. Go to this website. They will give you this card. You can print this card. It actually has more on it than I've included here. Very good very sound advice, 10 things to do every day, get enough sleep, get enough to eat, vary the work that you do, do some light exercise, do something pleasurable, find, focus on what you did well. I particularly like that one. You can do that in the moment. Learn from your mistakes, share a private joke, make sure it's a positive one, pray, meditate, and relax, and support a colleague. If you do each of those every day, you will be giving yourself some DHEA uh, as long as the joke is positive and sweet and kind. That feels like it went quickly to me. I wanna thank you 
um, on behalf of the mole, the horse, the fox, the boy, and Mr. Mekasee. <laughs> he was very instrumental in my ability to share with you the information that I wanted to make a point of. I want to thank you for what you do every day and caring. And thank you for your time and attention. Sincerely, me, our 180 staff, and Starlight Recovery colleagues. And at the very end, I'll show you a copy of the cover of the book and uh, my references. All right. I'm sure there are questions or comments. I'm happy to Thank take you, that. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, that was very good. And we do have a few questions. Uh, good. Well, one of which is uh, they're asking if there's going to be a recorded version of the presentation, and uh, <laughs> there will be. We will post it on the Starlight uh, website and uh, also have that posted on our Facebook page. So thank you for letting us record that. Um, also, um, someone asked if they could get a copy of your PowerPoint presentation. Is that going to be available? Um, I certainly can make it available. What um what I want to say is I'm a, a bit embarrassed because I had a cleaned up version of, you'll notice some of the references were not listed and I had some stuff in there. Nothing, the content doesn't change. Anything I talked about is still right there. It's the bottom stuff. I cleaned it up and saved a version of it. And in my foray this morning to click on my latest version, I clicked on this version instead of that one. Not sure exactly how I did that. And usually I save things on top of each other, but apparently, I wasn't taking enough deep breaths and did it um, that way, but it's no harm, no foul. And I will, um, I will make sure if I share this um, that it, you get the better copy. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, Ashley, ask uh, what the link was again to the pocket card. Oh, sorry. Let me go back. Um, sorry for the seasickness that you might get when I do this, but I'll go try and go slow. Oh, there it is. It's, um, can you see it? I, I'm having a hard time seeing it. It's HTTPS dot p r o q o l dot org hope that answered the question i'm going to go back to where i was or i'll just leave that up because those are sweet people somebody want to take notes and look, read them but the, the pocket card is pretty cool um in and of itself excellent thank you and, and velma and you Excuse me. You can see some more. I apologize, um, Eric. I um, at the on the card right there on my screen. You can see for more information, see your supervisor or visit. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Sorry, that's what I was trying to prevent. Sorry, uh -uh, Charlie. It's okay. Nobody's attacking us. It's you're not taking over the yard. Um, sorry. The uh, or all that information. Come here. Down. Down. You silly goose. That's no problem. Uh, Velma's asking if you've written a book. <laughs> I have not written a book. Um, that's that's an interesting thought. Um, I don't know what I would write about. Not come to think of it, unless it's how to how to have the craziest career ever known to a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I've been very blessed. People keep asking me to do things just like this. I learned these techniques about 15 years ago um because i was asked to do something else and um it's uh it's just interesting how i got to do biomed and do all these things um so anyway um, if, if if she might suggest what she thinks i might be good at writing about or what she what predicated that uh that question i would love to know that awesome chantelle you want to help me with these questions here Yes, um, Lisa is asking, how does the body get rid of cortisol? In her previous trainings, she understood that it's cried out, sweated out, and urinated out, but wasn't told it was cortisol, just more so it was adrenaline. Oh, well, um, I, you know, the metabolism of, of either EHA and cortisol, I am not expert at. I would be the wrong person to ask that. We probably need to talk to an endocrinologist. Um, but I, what I what I do know is that positive things help combat, um, and that's just giving yourself doses of DHEA as opposed to cortisol. And, and reliving those negative experiences, telling ourselves how, what a jerk somebody was repeatedly, 
Um, and, you know, maybe this person, who knows why this person had said what they said or did what they did. Um, and, um, and, I, and assuming good intent, and those are words I often use and neglected to use until this moment, will, is, are really the best combatants of, of, um, of anything negative that you can do to or for yourself. Um, and uh, I think my dog is now giving himself a dose of uh, cortisol. He is really very stressed. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I apologize. I was, that's my biggest fear. Thank you. My husband is going to rescue me, I think. Charlie, this dog is mine. He's all of 80 pounds and he is um, my buddy. And he thinks he's, he's um, keeping me safe. That's what's keeping me from giving myself THEA. I know his intent, or giving myself cortisol, his intent is good. <laughs> and there's been a lot of um, questions about the book, um, the name of oh. the book again, and the author. Okay, I'm not trying to make you seasick, but I'm telling you, that's the book. That is the cover of the book. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. I suggest you might want to Google him or, or look at YouTube with for him he's got an interesting story he's a he's he's just very an interesting personality i i got a i got a chuckle i guess it's the best word way of saying when i heard him speak <laughs> he's as kind and as sweet and as talented as his writing and his artwork yes his drawings are amazing um, yeah, they are. And he just scribbles them. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Velma um, is saying de-escalation and relaxing techniques. An audiobook would be awesome yeah. as Cynthia has a very relaxing voice. So there's oh. some <laughs> feedback on your book. <laughs> I'll tell my husband you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was um, questions about 180. I did put the information in the chat um, my number is, uh, there's an intake number that a loved one or the individual can call and we will assess and make sure that they fit criteria. And that number is 830-769-4567. And th that I, I will, um, that is forwarded to my cell phone so I can help with um, the calls. And it says, what area does 180 provide service? We have um, a, one in Seguin, we have one in Jordanton, we have one in Ennis, these are the ones in Texas. We also have one in Alaska. And who am I leaving out, Cynthia? Um, we have a, a hospital in Philadelphia area. That's right, okay. Yeah. And soon to have more. Yes. Were there any other questions? Did you see any, um, Eric, that I? Uh, I think we got them unless uh, there's any questions in the chat box, which could have got buried, but um, any last questions, please use the Q&A box. Uh, we really appreciate everybody joining us today. Uh, once again, there's gonna be a, uh, a link at the end for your evaluation and then to print off your certificate. Um, please put in your professional license number so we can uh, use that for audit purposes uh, for the state. And, uh, oh, we got some more questions. Uh, there you go, Chantel. Okay, and I did find some in the chat. Um, another uh, example of a book you should do, a book in peacefulness for direct staff. You did such an excellent job with the story time. You provided exceptional relaxing moments in these few minutes you just gave us. Um, also, someone said they have a dog too. This is our new Zoom world, just to <laughs> kind of ease you with that. And let me go back to the questions. <laughs> Starlight, Thank you for understanding. <laughs> <laughs> does Starlight um, Recovery only take insured patients? I'll let Frank take that one. Oh, he's talking. You're on no mute. Noise. You're on mute, Frank. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Starlight Recovery Center is in network with 49 commercial insurances. We're also in network with some Texas Medicaid. Uh, we do have a, a, a self cash, self pay rate. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, please uh, go to our website for more information or you can always call me or admissions 
even if we can't help 62 years in business with people from all over the United States, we know where they can go to get help. And by the way, we are part of Acadia Healthcare, which is the largest mental health substance abuse providers in the nation. We have 600 facilities nationwide and even one in England, Puerto Rico, Hawaii. So if we can't help, we know where we can try to get them help. And again, we work very closely with 180. Um, again, we do uh, occasionally run into uh, patients that are medically complicated that need to be on a med surge hospital uh, floor uh, to, uh, for the withdrawal symptoms. And then they work and try to get them straight from there to us. So uh, please call me if you have any questions, thanks. Thanks, Frank. And Velma, again, said, what about a podcast, Cynthia? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are, are helping my ego tremendously. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, wow. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. I will, I will take all this into consideration. <laughs> well, and we will have this recorded on our website. So if you go to the starlightrecovery.com website, we'll have that posted. Uh, give me a few days to to get that edited, I'll, I'll edit out the first part where <laughs> we're looking silly, but- uh, Probably a good idea. <laughs> yes, and- Well, they uh, were very human. Yes, <laughs> and, and dogs are good stress relievers, so that's, that's awesome. They are, I can't live without them. Sometimes hard to live with, but I can't live without, without them. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, I think, um, we have answered all the questions in the Q&A. If there's any last questions, please type them now and we'll get them to Cynthia. And once again, if you have difficulty uh, accessing the evaluation uh, or printing your certificate, please contact me or Eric. My information is in the chat. Again, some agencies, usually government agencies, have uh, addresses or domains where they're uh, blocked access to links. So that could be an issue. Uh, so the only way to get your certificate is through the evaluation. Uh, but again, if you have difficulty, please contact me so we can get that to you. Thank you. Great. And for my RN colleagues um, and, and LVN colleagues, if you can make sure that you indicate um, your what your status is in terms of a nurse RN or LVN. Um, I'm beholden to you for those CEUs and I will be sorting through a, a long list of um, people who have registered and who participated in order to make sure that your certificates are um, available to you. And Amy just posted a question. Um, Frank, I'm a school counselor. Can I still get a certificate? Thanks. I'm not an LPC. Absolutely. Uh, it's a certificate for anybody, even if they're not licensed to show that they attended. So it can be used for all purposes, but you do need to fill out your evaluation at the end. Thank you. Great. I see a couple more questions. I don't know how I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know. Another question was, will the survey be emailed to us or in the chat? Yeah, once again, uh, yeah, ahead. leave the uh, webinar, you'll receive the link. Uh, it'll also be emailed to you tomorrow. Um, uh, with also information about uh, 180 and starlight. So please look us up. Um, and like what Frank said, it does work great. 90% of the time you're able to go do your evaluation and print off your certificate. But if you have any technical issues with tight security on your email system, um, let myself or Frank know. So, all right. Yes, uh, Cindy said the title, the title date for today's presentation. It is actually on the drop down. Um, it's not in a numeric order, so look for that close. <laughs> well, great. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia, for uh, doing your presentation today. And I am just really hopeful that everybody on our webinar today is less stressed and know how to handle that and have has a stress. 
and uh, thanks for uh, for all your help doing this today. You're, you're welcome. My my um, wish too for everyone is that they use the tools um, and benefit from them. Great, and thanks Chantel from 180 and Frank. Yay! From Light, and uh, we appreciate your help uh, co-hosting today's webinar. And thank you for all the attendees that joined us. Uh, stay tuned for more great webinars coming up uh, with CEU opportunities. So that concludes our webinar today. So have a great weekend. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye, everyone. Thank you, Eric. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.